Bacteria are capable of producing a wide range of natural products, also known as metabolites, due to their chemical expertise. These metabolites give the bacteria significant evolutionary advantages, including their ability to interact with their environment and with each other to defend against various threats. Due to their diverse functions, many bacterial natural products such as antibiotics and anti-cancer drugs have been used in the medical treatments. However, the microbial species that we see today are only a small fraction of what inhabited the earth over the past 3 billion years. In this episode, I tell you about researchers who are looking for microbial metabolites from the past and how tapping into ancient DNA could help them create drugs of the future. I am Mohana Basu and this is Pure Science. Exploring this microbial past presents exciting opportunities to recover some of their lost chemistry. But small molecules are unlikely to persist in archaeological samples over long periods because they degrade with time. But with the publication of the first draft genome of an ancient bacterium back in 2011, over 1700 ancient microbial genomes from diverse pathogens have been characterized. Paleogenomics, the study of ancient genomes, is now becoming a feasible way to access the vast structural and functional diversity of ancient low molecular weight natural products. Now, instead of looking for these ancient molecules, researchers can recreate them using fragments of ancient genomes preserved in fossils. In a study published in the journal Science this week, researchers from the Max Planck Institute of Evolutionary Anthropology in Germany did just that. The cellular machinery producing bacterial natural products is encoded in genes that are typically in close proximity to one another, forming what are called biosynthetic gene clusters. Such genes are difficult to detect and reconstruct from ancient DNA because very old genetic material breaks down over time, fragmenting into thousands of pieces. The end result is numerous tiny DNA fragments all mixed like jumbled pieces of jigsaw puzzle. DNA is built of tiny building blocks known as nucleotides. Nucleotides are composed of three parts, a nitrogenous base, a 5-carbon sugar and a phosphate group. The four types of nitrogenous bases found in nucleotides are adenine, guanine, cytosine and thymine. These four bases form the genetic code that determines the traits of living organisms. The team from Germany sequenced billions of such ancient DNA fragments. They then improved a bioinformatic process that digitally unscrambles the ancient DNA and arranges them in stretches of up to 100,000 nucleotides long, which is a 2,000-fold improvement. This process allowed the team to not only identify what genes were present, but also their order in the genome. All of this helped them uncover the ways they differ from bacterial genes known today. The team was able to uncover the genomes of microbes living up to 100,000 years ago, including species not known to exist today. The findings also pushed back the previously oldest reconstructed microbial genomes by more than 90,000 years. The team reconstructed DNA extracted from ancient tooth tartar from 12 Neanderthals and 52 anatomically modern humans. They found a gene cluster that was shared by a high proportion of Neanderthals and modern humans living during the Middle and Upper Paleolithic age that lasted from 300,000 to 12,000 years ago. This cluster bore the molecular hallmarks of very ancient DNA and belonged to the bacterial genus Chlorobium, a group of green sulfur bacteria capable of photosynthesis. The team then inserted a synthetic version of this gene cluster into a modern bacterium called Pseudomona protogens so it could produce the chemical compounds encoded in these ancient genes. Using this method, the scientists were able to isolate two previously unknown compounds. They named these paleofuran A and B. The team was also able to produce larger quantities of the compounds for further analysis. 
By reconstructing these ancient compounds, the team showed for the first time that archaeological samples can serve as new sources of natural products. But what is the point of this? Why do we need to try and reconstruct microbial products from the past? Like every life form, microbes have been constantly evolving and adapting to their surrounding environment. And remember, since microbes inhabited the planet much before we did, they have lived through very different climates and environments. Microbes today possibly produce different natural products than ancient microbes from tens of thousands of years ago. Just between 25,000 to 10,000 years ago, the Earth underwent a major climatic shift, transitioning from a colder climate to a much warmer one. Human lifestyles also dramatically changed over this transition as people began living outside of caves and increasingly experimented with food production. These changes brought them into contact with different microbes through agriculture, animal husbandry and their newly built environments. Studying ancient bacteria may yield insights into bacterial species and biosynthetic genes no longer associated with humans today and perhaps even microbes that have gone extinct. While the amount of data collected by scientists on biological organisms has exponentially increased over the past few decades, the number of new antibiotics has stagnated. This is a huge global concern at present since many pathogens are able to evade existing antibiotic treatments and they are evolving to become drug resistant much faster than researchers can develop drugs. By reconstructing microbial genomes from archaeological samples, scientists can tap into a hidden diversity of natural products that would have been otherwise lost over time, increasing the number of potential sources from which they can discover new drugs. The team will now work on fine-tuning the process of discovering new compounds from ancient microbial DNA to make it less tedious. The team notes, however, that although they can recreate ancient molecules, what biological and ecological roles they play in the ancient earth are more and more difficult to decipher. Since the bacteria that originally produced these compounds no longer exist, they cannot be cultured or genetically manipulated in the lab. Further study will need to rely on similar bacteria that can be found today. Whether or not the functions of these compounds have remained the same in the modern relatives of ancient microbes will also need to be tested. Although the original functions of these compounds for ancient microbes may be unknown, they still have the potential of being repurposed to treat modern diseases. Nevertheless, this study represents the first proof of concept to show that microbial genomes reconstructed from ancient samples can be used as a source to access natural compounds from the past, which might lead to the discovery of new drugs. This is Mohana Basu, assistant editor at The Print. If you like our work, do consider paying for a subscription to the print. You can do so through the link in the description box below.